I feel like um, social media is, is like a, I'm standing on a rug and someone is pulling it away and I'm just trying to stay on it, you know? Um, I don't feel like I've, I've, I've slayed that dragon. It is something that you get up and relearn every day when you're working in this field. But one thing I've learned is that people love tools. They love to be given free resources that they can use that they didn't know about. I mean, it just always helps with these presentations. So you're gonna get some tips on post COVID-19 social media management, and you're gonna get some tools that you can use that are free. Um, and uh, again, I wanna say I'm not an expert on post COVID-19 social media management because in two weeks, three weeks, <laughs> or, you know, I, it's, hard to, it's hard to become an expert. I mean, months, two months uh, in two months, but I'm trying my best. So hopefully you'll take some things away that you definitely didn't know. And maybe I will take away how to advance the slideshow. <laughs> Let's see. Um, looking for my, so I am gonna try here to, do y'all see that? Do y'all see join team press play SB? No? Okay. Now, do you see a slide from me? The um, no. All right, let me try one more time. Here we go. Screen sharing has stopped. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time. Well, now, Chris, we did see your cover page, the four tips. Yeah, and um, yeah. now we see join. Now we see join team. See ah, team. okay. Here we are. Thank you very much for bearing with me. I think I'm in business now. So before I get really into it, I want to do a quick plug, quick plug for the Tourist Bureau who kind of loaned me uh, to y'all today <laughs> um, because they are launching a campaign uh, called Press Play Shreveport Bossier. Um, and what we are looking for is uh, arts organizations in Caddo and Bossier parishes to help uh, us uh, feed stories about attractions reopening to the media to make sure you've got your events listed at sbfunguide.com, even if they are virtual, and especially if they're virtual, y'all. I'm, I'm doing so much um, promotion of virtual events right now, and I love it. And I, you know, I mean, if it's even just a, a virtual tour of your museum or something, put it on the Fun Guide. I want to share it on our channels. We've got great engagement right now because so many people are on social all the time. So please let us help you promote your thing, even if you think, I don't know, I mean, is this worth putting on the fun guide? Yes, it is. We used to have 100 or so events on there a month, and now there might be 15. So we, you're looking at someone like me having so much less stuff to promote out there. And I, I would love to have your event to promote, uh, even and especially if it's virtual. Um, and if you've got a unique story, if you've got like if you run an attraction or if you run a gallery, Catherine, I'd really love to talk to you. I write a column every other week in the Times um, that is ostensibly about the tourism business, but that's been very hard to write lately. <laughs> so um, I like to write about people who are making creative, um, who are creatively tackling COVID-19 in our community. And if you've got like, wow, I wish someone knew about this employee that did this incredible thing or, or what have you, I want to hear about it. Pitch me. I'm, you might not think of me as a journalist, but pitch me. Um, and, I, you know, the, you may see um, the Tourist Bureau. Our, our handle is uh, Louisiana's Other Side on Facebook. You may see that. If you give us a share or a like or what have you, it'll, it'll sure have warm my heart. Um, just to confirm, you are seeing the one screen. Ignoring COVID-19 is not an option. Um, this is the thing I wanted to put right up front um, because like um, Catherine said, I, I have noticed some folks lately taking this approach and it's just not responsible. And it's also only going to make your consumer angry. <laughs> I mean, sincerely, um, the thing, and Judy Williams taught me this. And I, would, I think Judy would, would, would be the first person to jump in here and agree, I think. But the way to control a message is to get out in front and say it first the way you want it said. You know, don't just ignore a scenario and, and hope that no one asks, what the heck are y'all doing about social distancing? Um, you know, there's a major, major attraction in Shreveport that I love with all my heart. And I also won't call anyone out, but they're 
sole thing that they have done is post a meme on social media about how you got to keep an alligator's length between you when you go to their thing. That's not a plan. And that's not professional behavior. And they should be dragged for doing that. They should be pulled out in the public spotlight and said, look at this. People are being paid to manage this attraction. And the, the best they could do was a, a, a funny meme about the length of an alligator. We have to do more than that. Ignoring COVID-19 is not an option. You know, you can answer questions like, are masks gonna be required? Are you actually observing capacity restrictions? Are you keeping track of occupancy? How do I know if there are too many people in there? Go ahead and share those things, you know, get in front of them and, and talk with your community about how you're gonna handle it. It's uncomfortable, we're all uncomfortable right now. But at the end of the day, it's better to inform people than, than to leave them in the dark. Um, so th that was my first tip, but, but I would also say social media, and y'all forgive me, I get really into this stuff, but social media companies are not doing us any favors right now. It, 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 they're making it harder, actually. Um, I, I, do y'all know what I'm, I mean by the nonlinear timeline? Um, for example, on Facebook, you might, you might open your Facebook app today and see a post from uh, the R.W. Norton Art Gallery that says, um, we're going to allow people, um, and I'm making this up, y'all, I'm completely making it up, but they might say, we're going to allow people into the museum today, but not tomorrow. Well, um, because of the way Facebook has chosen to display information non-linearly, that post might have been made six days ago. And so what I would recommend is you um, craft an essential information post. When are we open? How, what are we doing about COVID-19? And pin it to the top of your Facebook page. Also pin it to the top of any events that you are currently promoting on Facebook. This sound, if you've never done this, and I wanna speak to the gentleman from the Ford Museum and things like that, don't be intimidated by it. It's super easy. Um, when you make a post on your page, there's a little drop down to the right of it and you can pull it down and it says pin to top of page. That means anytime anyone visits your profile, no matter what Facebook's algorithm wants to do, <laughs> to the contrary, they will see that post first. Um, so gather that essential information and pin it to the top of your page. If you have an event, this, an event page, also pin it there. Um, that's something easy, easy, easy to do. And the reason we do all this is because expectations can be managed. Outrage is a whole different story. So I'd rather, and I'm, I'm gonna be blunt with you, and Catherine and everybody else who's observing social distancing as I am, um, there's a whole lot of people out there who are not. Uh, a whole lot of people out there who are not. Um, it is easier to deal with them, you know, fussing at you for being a liberal or whatever and wearing a mask <laughs> than it is to deal with um, a bunch of customers showing up and finding that you don't have any plan for this. You know what I mean? So deal with expectations before the event and not outrage after it. And uh, this is personal to me as well. I think marketers have got to change the way we talk to people right now. And I hope I don't get emotional or anything like that, but a lot of people are going through a whole lot of really, really hard times. So we can't say things anymore that we used to say, unless we want to just be cruel. You know, why haven't you gotten your tickets to lunch on the plaza? Well, it might be because they, they suffered, um, uh, uh, maybe they've lost two jobs in their household. Maybe they don't know where their next paycheck's coming from. You know, maybe, maybe someone in their family's sick. Um, so we have got to stop saying things like that. I encourage people to not um, badger people the way we used to beat them over the head about buying tickets or, or donating. Speak kindly and sincerely um, and, and specifically. This next uh, example, our market will be safe and clean. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> Can you please tell me how um, you've ensured that it's going to be safe and clean? Can you show me some pictures maybe of the staff, you know, wiping down door handles? I mean, go ahead and, and walk the walk. You know what I mean? And show people what you're doing. Um, there's another example, you know, we'll be observing social distancing. 
that is a good gesture. It's not good information. Um, on the right, where it says, for this weekend's film screenings, only 39 of our theater's 238 seats will be sold for each screening, and every other row of seats will be taped off. That's a better way to say that thing on the left side. We just have to be specific, and we have to be kind. Um, so yeah, and, and there are a lot of fun ways to, to share this information. But thinking about considerate language at the Tourist Bureau, um, I never thought in my wildest dreams I would say this, but I am actually impressed by some of the messaging of the casinos. <laughs> um, because uh, they, you know, it is pretty wild that you can go to casinos right now, but you can't go to a public park. Um, but the casinos have found a way to say things um, that is, it, it shifts the onus to the, to the consumer. Like when you're ready, when you're ready to come back, to the strand we're here and you know we've got these tickets <laughs> not that would be a better way to say why haven't you bought your tickets yet for our season opener just i wanted to provide some lang language that is considerate and kind um instead of you know we understand or, or, or instead of um worried about covid nine don't worry about covid 19 we've got you know we've, we've we've cleaned everything up you might say we understand you've got questions about what we've done to sanitize our space and we want to provide those answers you know ask anything you've got in the comments and we will respond i don't I, you know i'm just throwing these things out there but we have to change our language go ahead and overshare normally when i was doing tour, you know presentations for the tourist bureau people always ask how often should i post and you know i worry that i'm going to lose followers and things like that I just don't think there's ever been a better time to um, to wade into the fray and and tell people you know pull back the curtain and show people how uh, your company is um, making sure they're doing everything they can to make it safe for visitors um, and and if someone is um, put off by that then they may not be um, then that's on them but I'm I would be very surprised if you lose many fans because you you're too specific about how you're going to commit yourselves to keeping them safe when they visit your attraction or attend your event. I like the idea of bringing people into the planning process. And it's just never been easier. If you have an iPhone, if you have a, a smartphone, you know, Pam, for example, um, um, uh, Art Space opened this past weekend on Saturday, right? Um, and, you know, you could, um, and I'm not saying you miss, I'm not critiquing or anything, but an hour before Art Space opened its doors on Saturday. They, you could have broadcast live to the Facebook page, and and someone could have just said, "Here's what to expect when you when you walk up to our doors on Saturday at 10 a.m. and we're going to walk through and show you what you can expect here when you arrive. Here's a sanitizer station. Um, you'll have to check in with our employee, but she will be six feet away, and um, you will be asked to wear a mask for the time being. We hope you understand. You know, bring them behind the scenes." We may come out of this, um, uh, you know, with a lot of negative things from COVID-19, but I think there's a real possibility we come out of this as organizations with a closer, tighter-knit community because we earn their trust during this time. Um, and I want to say this to y'all, from the bottom of my heart, do not be afraid to correct misinformation. If someone posts on your, your, um, your, your museum, say, Facebook page, uh, I don't understand why uh, you don't have, you're requiring people to wear masks. Uh, the pandemic was um, a conspiracy planned by the Chinese and it's fake. Back in the day, people used to say, oh, don't do the comments and don't engage. Uh, if someone's out there sharing information that's not only wrong, but dangerous, you have every right, delete, ban user, respond, do whatever you got to do, whatever feels right to you, but don't feel like you got to sit there and get beaten up by someone who's lying to people about something very serious. I hate to even think about these kinds of posts, but in this instance, I think it would do us all a service if we think about them now. You know, if you are lucky enough to have a staff person that manages your social media, page, just give them the exercise of writing down 
what how they would respond to these comments. I mean, we're all working uh, with perhaps less to do than we had before, perhaps more in some cases. Lots of marketers say they have more work right now, but maybe challenge your social media manager or yourself, if that's you, to think about how you would respond to these image, to these to these comments. And I've already seen a lot of attractions do a good job with these, and I've already seen a lot of attractions do a bad job with these, okay? The most common thing I'm seeing is it doesn't look like you all are social distancing. This has happened at numerous events, um, and it, in some instances, it has absolutely blown up on Facebook. It has changed the way I have felt about some event organizers in town. Um, but just look at these questions, and I'm sure y'all will be given these slides after, or I can send them to Pam and Rachel, who again, I thank. But think about how you would respond. You do have to accept reality. Some uncomfortable things are gonna happen here. Um, and for a sizable number of people, the prospect of attending in-person events right now is frightening. And, and events are gonna be a tough sell for a while. But you don't have to accept defeat. Um, and I feel like people who manage museums and galleries are like actually the luckiest people in the world right now. People who manage events are the most challenged, okay? So uh, my heart goes out to the Jennifer Hills and John Bogans, and then I kind of wish I could trade places with, you know, the, the Pam Atchison's and the others who manage galleries and museums. With your museum, you've got a whole treasure trove of things that you could go live and discuss. Every item in your museum is an opportunity to go live on Facebook. Look at this, you know, historic document that we found, you know, in Homer when it came out of the Homer courthouse basement and it's got to do with this incredible, you know, story. That's a whole Facebook live session that could be really well received, but I, I digress. So on the left, you have what we used to do. And on the right, we have what I hope y'all will do now. You know, we used to have receptions with big meat and cheese trays <laughs> and, uh, and have Q and A's with the artists. Now, maybe the Q and A is on Instagram Live. It's super easy to share a stream between two people on Instagram. And I know for some of y'all, I'm scaring you. It's not hard, I promise. You maybe don't even wanna put Instagram on your phone. I understand, but it's extremely popular. And uh, it's easy, for example, for, for say John Bogan to hop on Instagram, start a live stream, a live broadcast, whatever you wanna call it. Maybe one of the artists or behind the scenes tech is also broadcasting live. They can invite one another to share their stream. So it's almost like watching CNN with the two people talking back and forth. It looks a lot like that. Maybe that's the new Q&A with the artist. Maybe items for sale in the gift shop are items for sale in Facebook Marketplace. Um, I know that this is pretty advanced stuff because some of y'all have a lot of jobs and social media is just one of them. But just recently, and I mean like last week, Facebook made it where pages can sell items in the marketplace, okay? It used to just be people. So, you, so I could sell my um, homemade um, egg rolls or whatever <laughs> in, the, in the Facebook marketplace. But for example, the Robinson Film Center couldn't sell movie tickets in the marketplace. That's changed now. Um, companies can sell on their pages marketplace. And again, I know I'm talking over some of y'all's heads, but I'm just trying to inspire you. Facebook owns Instagram. So when you list something for sale, in a Facebook marketplace as a company now, it's also for sale, you can buy it on Instagram, in app. So th there's a lot there and a consultant would probably be needed to help you set it all up, but it's, it might be the new way, it might be the future. Uh, we used to shoot video at the art openings and post it online after to say what a good time we had. Now that's reversed, I think we have to shoot the video uh, teasers that showcase a few pieces from the show. And one thing that I encourage you to do um, is don't, don't think about it like I need to go live for an hour and walk people through this whole show at this art museum. Nobody has time for that. And frankly, people aren't as interested. And I'm not trying to insult you, but even if you love your art show, people probably don't want to sit on a Facebook Live for an hour and watch you walk through it. But, <clears throat> pardon me, I think they would sit for 10 or 15 minutes and watch you show off three of the pieces. Talk about why they were selected for the exhibition, if it's critical mass or something. 
and then do that six or seven times over the course of a few weeks. Instead of doing one broadcast that lasts an hour and 20 minutes and bores the tears out of everybody, do five broadcasts that last 12 minutes and nobody gets bored. Um, you can absolutely use technology, by the way, to, uh, we used to thank sponsors by putting their logos everywhere at the reception. Now maybe their logos are in the live stream and there's really affordable technology you can do to put up full screen graphics before and after. And I imagine there's some freeware too. And I bet people like Shadi, who's on this call would know those free options. Um, I'm blessed, like I said, to have that $40 a month uh, for the program that I use. This is getting a little dicey because I'm out of my depths here, but I think the idea of one big opening is probably over now. I mean, for, until there's a, for the foreseeable future, um, why not have like four little openings? <laughs> and um, make one or two of them, especially for high risk populations. Um, I don't know what to call these, limited access or high sanitization or, you know, um, uh, 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 Judy, I'm sure, could come up with a great name, but I think different people have different needs, and so now you can't expect them all to come to one big opening. I would probably give people chances to come to smaller events um, and limit them to limit the number of people who could reserve a spot in them. Um, uh, I, we've already talked about this, but one long piece of streamed content, like documenting a live event, is the way we used to do it. And forgive me, I'm not picking on anybody, <laughs> Pam. Um, <laughs> but we used to, uh, we would just stream live while someone at a podium spoke. And um, that's not what I talk about when I'm talking about live streaming. I, I'm talking about, um, say, the, the sponsor gets to talk about why they sponsored for 10 minutes. Or, and then that's not an exciting example. Um, but the artist walks you through three of their pieces for 10 minutes. That's the kind of streaming content that's interesting. A person at a podium is generally not going to get people to watch streaming content. Um, so now we're going to get into the, I think, the fun part, which is the tools. Um, uh, there is a new functionality on Facebook that allows you to tag uh, partners. Um, so if you are hosting an exhibition that has seven artists in it, and four of those artists have Facebook pages for their professional art company, right? Like, I'm um, just making this up, but if it's uh, J. Mark's Art or um, Micah Herald Tattoo, um, you can now tag them in the, if you see, I put up an example, it says in support of blank here. Um, and this is for for-profits and not-for-profits. This is, this is an option for tagging unpaid partners, okay? So this is not the same as tagging a sponsored post, but if you tag, if you had an exhibit, exhibition and four artists who had Facebook pages were in it, and you tag them here where it says in support of, that would increase your organic reach to be more likely to also reach their followers, okay? And I know I'm using some technical terms for those of you who are not as active on social media, but um, this is a new functionality on Facebook, and if you have sponsors, for example, every um, post you make about this exhibit that they're sponsoring, they ought to be tagged in it in the sponsored portion, um, which is a little different from this, this what you're seeing. But I know I'm talking a mile a minute, but in, other, in, in short, if you use this functionality and tag partners, it will increase the number of people who see your posts. That's the shortest way I can say it. And it's oversimplifying, but there you go. And there's a link in the presentation to how to do this. Um, if you use Chrome, there is a wonderful new plugin. Um, and again, I know I'm going to talk over some people's heads, but plugins are like apps for your web browser. But they have a new one called resizing.app. That's also the website where it lives. If you use the Google Chrome browser, if you go get this plugin, if you look at what it's doing in the screen cap that I put up, it is worth its weight in gold because how many times have you had to Google like what size is a YouTube image? What size is a Facebook cover image? With, with resizing.app, you just tell it what you're trying to make and it crops the picture automatically for that purpose. And I am so sick of Googling image dimensions. You have no idea. 
Um, so this tool was really cool for me. And if you use Chrome, it's free um, and it's super handy. Facebook actually put a whole team and a whole bunch of money into developing what they call their virtual and experiential event playbook. So I'm sorry, y'all, my neighbor is power washing his house like he does three times a week. <laughs> um, but this is free as well. I put a link to it and it is Facebook's internal best practices for doing live streaming events. I got a whole lot out of it. I found it easy to read. I found it simple to parse through. Um, if you've, it, I mean, if you are, for example, working from home and you're blessed to not be doing 10 times as much, download this playbook and read it. It took me about 35 minutes. I learned several things that I didn't know and it was easy to comprehend. It wasn't just for the techie, you know, the, your techie um, nephew. <laughs> um, so cross-posting is a way that you can make one post and, and make it possible for other pages to um, also share it without having to, for example, let's say you posted a video, right, of um, an art opening that was sponsored by Frymaster. Now, and I'm just making this up, okay? But back in the day, the, the thing that would happen that was so frustrating is you, you'd post the video to your page and hope that Frymaster saw it and felt acknowledged, and you'd hope that maybe if you're lucky, they would share it or they would, in most cases, they'd download it and upload it again. So it's off doing its own thing. You don't know how many people are seeing it. Cross-posting allows two pages to share content, essentially. Now, that means they can do whatever they want with it. You can do whatever you want with it. Y'all can both see centralized analytics. Like you, it's only counting one time how many people are watching something as opposed to like it would do if it were uploaded twice. So cross-posting basically means if I have an am art space and I have an art opening that's sponsored by Frymaster, I want to make Frymaster a cross-posting page. Like you can see here, all y'all in wine country, they can share the same video, you know, that I made uh, uh, or that, um, that we made um, about, uh, about something that involved wine country. So now wine country can share that video or they could when they were you know, around, they've gone out of business. But since, since I put this all together, but they can share that video, they can download it, et cetera, without having to like um, ask my permission or interact with me in any way. And we can both use that content in different ways. It extends our reach to bigger audiences. The donate button. If you have a not-for-profit and you're not using this thing, I got nothing for you. <laughs> it's, it is low hanging fruit. It's, it's simple. Um, there's a link here to the social good page that Facebook has for you. It's a clearinghouse of where you can find information on all the things they, they make available for not-for-profits. <clears throat> Pardon me, y'all. I should have had a bottle of water or something. But you can put that darn donate button so many places, and it's great. You can even, like, let's say Pam goes live to have an artist walk through their work at Critical Mass. Um, once she signs up for the donate button and gets approved, basically Facebook just wants to make sure she's not a crook and that she's actually not for profit, et cetera. It's not a huge process. She can insert that donate button everywhere, mm -hmm. including on the live stream. So if she's going live from the gallery, there can be a donate button on bottom the whole time. You can see that on the right side example on, of your screen. Also, the donate button can live permanently in places like you see on the left side example. The donate button is simple to put out there <clears throat> and you can learn how at socialgood.fb.com or the link right here that'll be in the presentation that I send to Pam or you may, have, you may be receiving already shortly afterwards. Um, and that's all I have and I hope I didn't take too much of your time. I know that Judy and I both wanted to leave some time for conversation. I think we would all agree that was phenomenal. Let's have thank a hand you. clap, please. I know that's just really just oh, thank you all. Y'all are the ones that face these enormous challenges. I'm blessed to have a job that allows me to, to think about this stuff. Um, so thank you all. Chris, Chris, have you done the work to find the donate button? Mm -hmm. 
I have struggled to, to make my way to the donor. You know, we want to still acknowledge them. We've received money. We know we've done the donate button and, and, and money comes in. But have you done the work? I, I, I've struggled to get to the donor name, you know, so that we can acknowledge them. So actually I haven't, John, and that's one of the shortcomings of my situation. Like I'm able to learn all this stuff, but since I don't actually administer a not-for-profit, I've never set up the donate button. I've only learned how it works. Um, we, we've done it and they yeah. mail you money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's nice. But so you're not able to access donor information? I'm sure you're able believe to. believe that you can. I just haven't ever succeeded at it. Okay. For well, instance, I'm, somebody does like I'm, a birthday gift. And they have all their people give to the strand for their birthday. Mm -hmm. it's a check. Yeah, no okay. list of names. I, I, I'll, 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 I'll get you. I'll let you know something about Friday. That's okay. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, okay. Who is speaking? Because everyone else should go ahead and mute themselves. Who was asking the question? Was it you? I, I was Jennifer. Laughing. Jennifer, yeah. So, so yeah, we get a check from them, and. I'm kind of aware of whose birthday it was because because I see it, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's the only way you know. The check comes is just a random check. I, I'm serious, Jennifer. Whether or not we do it during COVID nineteen <laughs> or after, I would love to come over and like log in with you because I've never had that privilege. I've never like seen the back end of the donate button. Um, so like, come on, we are here. Come when ready. Okay, because I guarantee you there's a way to get to that user donor data, and we just haven't found it. Um, I can't find it. Okay. I will say that um, Kathy <laughs> and I, we've been trying to get the donate button onto our Facebook page for like months now. Oh, and no. We, she, she put in a request, but like we still haven't gotten it available on our Facebook page. Okay. The other thing is you can eat, and, and they may have changed it since the last time I looked. But it could either be a donut button or a buy ticket button, but you can't do both. Oh, okay. Well, again, I, I appreciate y'all educating me because you're actually doing the work and I'm, I'm reading web pages essentially. So Shadi, I would love to know if that gets resolved for you. And Jennifer, I would love to come one day if we're able to do it cleanly, you know, and just like sit down and look at the back end of how the donate button works, which I've never been able to do. Jennifer, I have a question on that. You said um, you can either do donate or buy tickets. Can you alternate and do, let's say, donate button on one post and, and buy tickets on another, or do you just have to pick one I, of those? I think it's one or the other. Now, you can switch them back and forth, but I, the last mm -hmm. time I attempted it, it was either one or the other. And okay. was that pre-COVID-19, Jennifer? Yes. Okay. Chris, um, first of all, thank you for using your platform to help people be safe and responsible. That's really important. I also wanted to suggest one other thing to nonprofits, and you may already be taking advantage of this. With all the increased traffic on Amazon, they offer a feature called smile.amazon.com where uh, your people who support you can donate proceeds from Amazon, a percentage of the sales that they make, they create, go to your arts organization. And I thought this would be just so incremental, but I learned from an organization that I was donating to that they actually got a fairly significant check from Amazon because of it. And now if you ask your supporters to do this with all the increased traffic, this might be just an additional source of income for you. Mm -hmm. I've been surprised at how little I've seen those used. We have it and we put it as a link at the bottom of every email we send out. Right. I need to start shopping with that. Thank you for reminding me. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, have you been getting, have you been, Jennifer, have you been yes. getting money back? Yeah, we get, I mean, it's not a, significant amount but we get a check quarterly or something from them and it says on your page if you're the administrator of the amazon smile page it will say you know it may go to everybody because i think it's on my personal page it says your um purchases have supported the strand theater to the amount of 35 dollars or whatever i think really? right now it's, I think right now it's worth going back to your constituents to remind them about this if they didn't mm -hmm. do it before, just because in this environment, 
everybody's ordering online. So for better or for worse. Yeah, I think Jennifer, that it, it might be really fun to get creative too. Like maybe set up a Facebook event called like uh, shop, you know, Amazon orders for the Strand Theater. You know, I, I mean, I know that this stuff gets real dicey because, you know, Jeff Bezos is not the greatest guy in the world, <laughs> but we, um, you could carefully use it in a way that clearly states that you'd rather people support local businesses, but if they're gonna be shopping online, if they would please use this link, you know what I mean? Um, it, it, it's worth trying to get creative because I think you could, you could mess around and end up with a lot of people organizing to order on, on Amazon using that link and wind up with a significant amount of money, I think. It, what is the, isn't there a yearly, is it twice a year or once a year that, that there's a mega Amazon day, you know? What, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Smile what is, day or something like that, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Like Prime Day. Prime yeah. Day. Is that once or twice a year? Once, I think. It's in, should be coming up soon, I think. Mm. It's usually in July, I think. Mm. Hey, Chris, mm -hmm. would you take your the screen share off for a minute so everybody oh, yeah. can see one another? Yeah, I'm sorry. That, that would be, no, that's great. But then we'll, we'll be able to see who's out there. I think a few more have joined in. Yes, let me and see. And thank you for um, allowing us to share that we we are recording uh the session and um i thank you for allowing us to share it with some of the groups who may not have been able to tune in today well no problem i'm um trying. there we go okay thank there you there we are there we I are think that was okay. probably rachel i appreciate you <laughs> okay. um, chris let me see of course chris uh put something on the did you want to share that verbally chris i know you put it up on the chat Oh, um, to sh share the link to the um, presentation, or? Uh, she, no, she says, I, I know that you're doing some sort of live event with the donut, donate button, you can get the data. We were able to access it when we did our happy hour for Give for Good. I thought you meant me, you meant Chris Holland, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, Chris Holland put something on the chat. I was gonna say, uh, Shadi has asked if you might share a link. Mm -hmm. and, there was uh, a there was um sorry there was a link about the the virtual Facebook or dimensions or something that you yes have. yes uh, you can share that link yeah. as well absolutely yeah all right okay we we just have everyone for a few more minutes till eleven any specific questions you want to ask about well, I have a question a about guess. marketing for the Strand or an event, you know, um, the Strand is such a great building and every time you go, you're like hurried to get to your seats and to get in place. So you don't have to pay for a show coming in. Is there any way an event could be done that people would just, I don't know if you could come do a picnic inside because then people would not have masks, but is this a time to, um, do like a socially distanced visit in the Strand and sell tickets to it. I mean, you, it's such a great building and you're always like, you get your tickets, you come in, you get seated, you enjoy the performance and you just don't have this time to love the space that you're in. I don't know, it just seems like a way to do it without having to pay for a you know, show um, coming in off the road. What, one of the, I guess the simplest answer to that is that we do tours at no cost, you know, we ask if you would like to make a donation, of course, we're happy to take it, but we do tours and they can be as small as, you know, two or three people or in, in better times, we do school groups and so forth. So that's, you know, I, do, I can do a 45 minute history tour, which is great. And we're yeah. also, of course, when we announce the season, we're gonna have, our plan is to do a grand is grand reopening party, and use more of the building than just the stage. So have you know separate people out and, and show them more of the building, more of what we've done with our. Uh, nice, nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyone else have a question or an observation to share? Well, this has been so informative. I'm I'm so grateful for. Um, conceptual conversation and then specific techniques and strategies and for giving up the podium.
Yes, I think that's going to be great fun. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, very much. <laughs> um, so many things to try that, that are going to make a big difference in everyone's life. And I thank you. So this was the arts administrators meeting today. We won't, we won't meet again for a while, but if you all have another topic that you'd like to explore or guest speakers that you would like, and again, um, Chris and Judy, you were, you were begged for. So thank you so much for coming to the aid of your arts community. We're all so grateful. If you have other ideas, please email me and let me know. But for right now, I just want to Thank you all for tuning in and thank Judy and Chris for taking us to the next level of communication, marketing, and public relations. Thank you so much. You're just great. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Bye, everyone. Pam, will you please email us the slides from the presentation? I My chat view did not show correctly today, so I wasn't able to see anything in chat. Hello. Yes, I will. I will, Allison. Thank you. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I'm through. Here is your chat. Well, thank you, Pam. Thank you, ma'am. So how's things going to you? Well, I just did this uh, meeting. Been on that. I'm not going to keep. I am starting my.